Professor, don't pick me. I don't know the answer. I don't pick. I look down, right? If you're in the, when I, let me tell you something, and the VP of business admin is here, so I shouldn't repeat this, but when they hired me as an athletic director, I sat in an architect's meeting, and I am as about as dumb as a post when it comes to anything to do with numbers and angles. And they're like, the uh, fundibulator valve of the uh, architectural, they're, 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 uh, what do you think, uh, Dr. Joseph? Uh, let me look into that for you and get back to you. <laughs> right? I was saying, oh, God, God, don't, please don't ask me. Please don't ask me. We all have this negative self-talk that goes in our head. Guess what? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. We saw it there with the, um, with the video Sheldon, Dr. Levy showed. Right? We know that our thoughts influence actions. Why do we want to say that negative self-talk to ourselves? We need to get our own self-affirmations. Muhammad Ali, what was his self-affirmation? I am the greatest. Who else is going to tell you? There need to be quiet moments in your bedroom, quiet moments when you're brushing your teeth, that we need to reaffirm, I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. That is my affirmation. I came from a school of 1,000 people. I lived in a town of 1,000 people for 15 years. There's no reason that I should be in charge of an athletic department building Maple Leaf Gardens. But I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. If I don't say it, if I don't believe it, no one else will. How do you build self-confidence? Get away from the people who will tear you down. There's enough of that. Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. There is no one better than me. It's a difference between hubris and ego and false pride. It's just reminding yourself in quiet, silent moments. I put it down on a list. It's right beside my mirror, right? About all the things that make me who I am. Because I make enough mistakes, and the newspapers will recognize it, and people around me will recognize it, and they'll tear me down. And pretty soon, I'll begin to believe it. There was a time when my confidence was really low. There was a time when I took this job, when I came from Iowa, I don't know if I could do it. I had to bring out my self-confidence letter, a letter I wrote to myself when I was feeling good. Ivan, congratulations on getting your PhD before 40. Congrat I am 40, under. <laughs> congratulations on winning a national championship. Good job on raising three good kids and marrying the right woman. I wrote a letter to myself it was my own brag sheet, my own letter about the things I was proud of. Because there are moments, and we'll all experience them in our career, in our life, in our job hunting, in our relationships, when we are not feeling good about who and what and where we are. And I had to bring out that letter and read it time and time again, for a period of about two weeks, to weather me through that storm. It was important. Stop the self-talk, the negative self-talk. If you'll watch, you'll see some athletes, they'll have a little bandage or a little um, brand around them. Uh, Lance Armstrong's a perfect one. What's his self-affirmation? Livestrong isn't a brand. It was to remind him of who he was. Live strong. Then it came a brand. He would move that from one arm to the next arm when doubt and fear came into his mind. Live strong. Put it on there. Let's go. We'll all have it. Replace it. Two ways to build self-confidence. Worried about my time, I'm gonna tell you of one way that you can build self-confidence in others. We are coaches and educators. We are teachers, we are people who will create value in the world. And in doing that, we are critical by the nature of what we do. I'm a, I'm a coach, I want you to score a goal. Ball went over high, dang it, the ball went high. Thank you, coach, I know that. <laughs> Feedback tells me that. So what do we do? I need you to put your elbow or here, I need you to put your knee over the ball, I need to follow through, boom, land, great. Notice I never made it as a professional. What can we do? We fix mistakes. When I'm fixing that mistake, Johnny, this is terrible, you need to bend your knee, you need to do this, this. What have I done to Johnny's self-confidence? Bend your knee, think of this, think of this. Next thing you know, Johnny's crushed. Ignore what Johnny does wrong and find Bob or Sally or Frida over here. Great goal, Frida. I loved how you kept your knee low, you followed through, and you landed like this. Great job. Johnny, huh? Great. Johnny's not demoralized. 
His confidence isn't shot, and what I've done is I've built up Frida's. Imagine how we could change the way we parented kids. Instead of 